Just yesterday, we heard a statement from the White House press secretary that was intended to signal the resolve and strength and commitment of the U.S. government, but something didn't quite ring right. We have rallied more than 140 countries to condemn Russia's invasion into, into Ukraine. That's what the president has been able to do. There is strong, very strong international coalition behind Ukraine, and if Putin thinks he can outlast us, he's wrong. He's wrong. And so we will have another package of aid for Ukraine soon to signal our continued support for the brave people of Ukraine. And so that's our message. If he thinks he can outlast us, that is Mr. Putin, we believe he's wrong. Yeah, but see, I've heard that word before. And if that sounds a little familiar to you, it should. Because, uh, uh, let's see, 11 years ago in 2012, another senior American official said something very similar. I believe that the NATO summit uh, in Chicago sent three unmistakable messages to the world, uh, to the Afghan people, uh, that we're committed to your future. Uh, to the region, the international community will not abandon Afghanistan. And to the Taliban, you cannot wait us out. Hmm. How'd that work out? Well, we're not done yet because let's back up a year before that. And we had the actual president of the United States himself make it a similar enunciation. In Afghanistan, our troops have taken Taliban strongholds and trained Afghan security forces. Our purpose is clear. By preventing the Taliban from reestablishing a stranglehold over the Afghan people, we will deny al-Qaeda the safe haven that served as a launching pad for 9-11. And the Afghan government will need to deliver better governance. But we are strengthening the capacity of the Afghan people and building an enduring partnership with them. This year, we will work with nearly 50 countries to begin a transition to an Afghan lead. And this July, we will begin to bring our troops home. You see a theme there. We, we want to use, again, these flourishing words of resolve and strength and an enduring commitment. How, how long did that commitment endure? Look, there's, there's some important corollaries between what happened by General Allen there and President Obama, what they both said in 2011 and 2012 about a commitment to the United States. Our adversaries better not think they can outlast us, which is exactly what the press secretary just said yesterday in this current situation with Ukraine and Russia. Now, why would anyone expect that Putin would not think that he can outlast us when we heard these previous you know, emphatic uh, declarations that were nothing but empty, empty blather. And and look, it, I, I was on the ground in Afghanistan d during those statements, or at least during one of them. I, I was on the ground in 2011. I knew that that was nonsense. You know, Obama was talking about, yeah, the Afghan government has to do a little bit better governance because they were among the most corrupt nations in the world. As it turns out, almost as corrupt as the Ukraine government is today. And we know there's all kinds of reports out, even in the last couple of days about significant corruption of the Ukrainian government. And th without a government to, to run the operation there, I mean, we don't even have a, a partner that you can really rely on, just like the Afghan government was unreliable and was ultimately responsible for the military failure in their country. It was not our fault. It was the failure of the government in Afghanistan. It was a failure of their military to, to, to be held accountable and then, frankly, we bore some of that responsibility because we didn't hold anyone accountable. We knew these things were going on. Point blank, absolutely knew it. Now, flash forward to today. The White House and their senior advisors have to know that the Ukrainian government is extremely corrupt, that the U uh, Ukrainian military is spent. They are incredibly brave and in have, have performed remarkably well. And, and I don't shy from saying that in the least. They have outperformed everybody's expectations. But you're asking them to do something that's beyond their capacity. And now then, the more we ask them to do things that are beyond their capacity, it's no longer a positive thing in helping them. It's actually supporting the continuation of something that's killing them. So when you hear our, our senior government officials and, and even especially if it later comes from the president himself talking about our resolve and how Putin better not think that he can outlast us. There's every reason in the world for Putin to, to believe that because he's seen it. He's seen it recently and he's seen it in other cases as well. If I wish that this were the only one. But there's also reason to believe that our firm convictions are not based on firm reality because th there is very great reason 
to question whether the Ukraine military can hold on, even if they don't collapse and just give give up like the uh, Afghan military did. Even if they stay firm, it's not completely sure that they're going to be able to remain cohesion as the war goes on and their casualties continue to rise. And our government should take that into consideration before we continue to put our credibility on the line of what we're going to do and, and what kind of outcomes we seek and all those kinds of things together. That's very important because I can point right now to the problem that we had because of our obviously vacant words that we used in, in Afghanistan and how that could well be influencing Putin to say, no, I think that your resolve is not good, especially on something that's not directly tied to your national security, as he knows it's not. And then, of course, if we do the same thing here, and if this, again, despite all of these claims of we're going to stick around and are resolve and all that, and then if this also falls apart like the Afghan situation did, what do you think future adversaries are going to do? Now, very often, there, the people in this country, they love to use the, the, the threat of our lack of credibility if we don't do X or if we don't do Y or if we take this different course of action, our credibility will be on the line. And usually it's a bunch of nonsense. But this is a real situation because when you put your name on something and then it turns out to be completely fabricated and, and it, that it completely falls flat and it was done so for predictable reasons reasons that should have been known, then your credibility actually does come into question. And now your your friends and your adversaries will doubt your word. And that leads to miscalculation potentially on the part of an adversary. And it leads to lack of, of trust on our friends, both of which are bad for our national security and potential economic prosperity into the future. This is something we've got to get right because our security as a nation could come into question unnecessarily if we don't get this problem fixed here, we have to be a nation of our word, whether that's, you know, something that's going to be resolved and we're going to stick to it no matter what. And we should only do that when it is absolutely in our national interest. But if it's not, then we need to get out of this ridiculous habit of claiming all kinds of support and all kinds of flowery rhetoric that are not backed up by substance because people are starting to see through that and it's not working out for our advantage. We need to stop that and we need to do everything in our power to just mean what we say. I don't think that's asking too much. Do you? And don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time on Deep Dive.